hello people welcome to my channel so today's video is going to be about a visit to the center for national culture kumase culture as wendell pierce said is the form through which we as a society reflect on who we are where we've been and where we hope to be video entails a brief history about how the center came about, a mini tour to the job brain, that's an open theater, the craft shop, the Premier the Second Jubilee Museum, and the visual arts department, which includes pottery and ceramics, tie and dye, batik and kente weaving. talking much let's just get right into the video i really hope you enjoy it's hard to breathe but that's all right Hush. hello people welcome back to my channel so, so i've today. met the head of department for research mr peter king afia Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome to my channel. You're, you're, you're welcome. Please, I want you to tell us a little bit about the Kumasi Cultural Center. In, in brief, uh, this is the foremost cultural institution in the whole of Ghana, <coughs> and for that matter, West Africa. And it was founded in 1951 okay. uh, through the personal drive of uh, uh, the late Dr. Alexander Ataya Achamati. So in 1951, it was born and christened as Santi Cultural Center. Center. It was until 1963 that it became known as Ghana National Cultural Center, when the first president of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, had visited the cultural center, and Dr. Chamatin, the founder and first director, took him on a tour of the whole establishment, and he was amazed to have seen what the Asantis have done. So when he went back, he moved that in this, this you know, uh, facility should be nationalized. Now, you have, you have, you have, you have. Yeah, so in your opinion, do you think that at least each region should have a center for the national culture? Because the need for other regions to have similar centers so that it, you have a pool of cultures of the whole Ghana um, so, representing the entire country. So. Until then, we had only this one called the Ghana National Cultural Center. Yes. So, what should a person expect? He wants he or she wants to come here. Yeah, That's this is a say. major tourist destination in, in, in Kumasi. So much to see. It is not only the museum, yes. which is about the oldest. I, I would say it's the oldest in Ghana because the museum was built in 1956. Okay. Yes. We also have the craft centers, uh, the craft shops. Sure. You know, the pool of craftsmen, they make their products, and we have these shops that serve as the marketing outlets. So we'll take you there, and then we have. Um, the visual arts, if you want to see how painting is done, if you want to see how um, bamboo rattan works are done, okay. and then if you want to see the modern kinti pottery and ceramics, we, we do it all. And the performance, yes, yes, performance. performance. You know, so please, I want to know the type of tourists that come here. I want to know if it's mostly international tourists or it's people based in Kumasi or Ashanti region or Accra or anyone. Yeah, at it all. is. Uh, let me say it is across the board. Okay across the country Ghana okay. the local people come a lot though but they don't spend as much as okay. uh, international. The, the international tourists is a cradle of culture in Ghana yeah. I feel and like if anyone wants to get to Ashanti region wants to visit Ashanti region they should consider of course the we say I mean a visit center. to the a visit to Kumasi without visiting the cultural center it's, 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 it's not a visit let me see that Manchia yeah, it comes first before, comes first before the cultural okay, center. Okay, so how has this corona affected the it has It has affected us a good deal. The impact has been phenomenal, negatively. And we thank God we are alive. Yes. The government's policy that it puts in place in regarding the I mean, protocol measures and what have you, we've been able to adhere to it. Tourism is, for the past six months, it's completely down. down. But now, I mean, the signs are quite hopeful. The, the writings on the wall, things are things do look bright, and we hope that this year we see it will be still down. But hopefully, from next year, going things will pick up. I think they're helping the Ashanti region as a whole, this national culture center. 
Yeah, this uh, cultural center is the epitome of our identity, our way of life. And I mean, it exemplifies all the aspects of our culture. And so it has impacted on the, the people, and, you know, it's been able to instill some confidence, pride. And you know, the Ashantis, yeah. you know, look at how beautiful you are, you are dressed. Oh, thank yes. you. <laughs> Very nice. Look at the ladies around and the gentlemen, all of us, you know. So I really like your shirt. Yeah, too. Thank you so much. Because when you understand culture, the benefits are uh, enormous. If you understand culture, then you, you patronize culture. Yeah. So that the money that we are having to, you know, send to import things from outside, we it spend it right here. here. So culture is, for me, is... Uh, uh, patronage of you know local content you know goods and services okay. I will put it in that way so that the benefits cannot be quantified exactly. so what would you tell people watching if they want to come here or anything would they regret it or they will really nobody have... nobody has come here and ever regretted let's you know <laughs> they go and it's like they had they had they go and some of them sometimes particularly with the African Americans when they are done and they are going you see them some of them tearing shedding tears if they see that connection yeah. the, the spiritual bonding you know yeah. it is this place that you come and you have the feel of our culture mm -hmm. yes sir. so you come here you learn a lot you know education is endless yeah. like people say uh, education is like a lost property if you go and you find it grab it you understand so it is helping to or it has helped to really reconnect the African diaspora to the ancestry home and all those things. Uh, it's, it's a place for relaxation, place, a, a center for excellence. We have the Ashanti Library for the one that the students and researchers. Thank you so much. You are it most was welcome. really nice having this. It's, it's mm -hmm. a pleasure. Yeah. So please, we are the job room and open that theater where you can go and entertain yourselves. You can watch the people perform, dance, sing. So I'm really, really excited. I want to see Ladies, we have a wrapper 
with our local prints. Yeah. We have another wrapper here. And we have a shirt that they have a drink cross symbols on it. Okay, so what does the drink cross symbol mean? I think it means farewell. Okay. In the olden days, when you're going somewhere, you tell your loved one where you're going to, okay. it sometimes brings some ill feelings. So they say, why can't we have a symbol that will tell us when to tell your loved one indirectly? Mm -hmm. That came about the Dean Class symbol, which means farewell. farewell. Yeah. Right. We have Akofuna, it's a symbol of authority. We have Jinyami, we have Jinyami, except God, I mean God is omnipotent and omnipresent. We have the Sankofa, I mean going back to your root of tracing your ancestors. We have another one too here. We have one, ones that they've created. This one was new. And this is also Sankofa. Yeah, you can wear it nicely. As you can see here, we have some paintings. We have these. We have our local things that they used to make chains with the bees. Can you tell us what it is? Okay, all these are waist bees. And they put it on a female waist to determine the weight of the child. Sometimes so they'll put it on the hand or the leg to determine the, how the child is growing, whether the child is growing lean or growing fat. That's when they'll I heard, I heard it. And also, also they'll give them shape. That's, the, that's why the African woman yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the whole Okay, why is it called Ahenepa? A good woman doesn't talk anyhow. It's like action, speak for itself. Okay. So, our earrings made with wood. Okay, so let's. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our traditional game that we play sometimes in the evening yeah. or when you feel like you don't have anything to, to do, do you are bored you just play the game like we have some marbles inside it's played by two people okay sure. i want you to start this okay. Mm -hmm. two two okay. no one wins <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so please what does this mean or is this same thing yeah this was fertility door for a barren woman if you're a woman you can have a child you show this door as a baby, you carry it on your back as you do in Ghana here. You stretch your leg on the baby with that the door, you powder the door, you put on cloth, you pretend as if you have a newborn child. Okay. If you have faith in it, it's open the chance for you to have your own child and treat it the way you are treating it. And it really works. It works like magic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I want to show you something. We have a symbol of unity. Cut from one piece of wood. A, a, a stamp that you can put on the there. Okay. To hold this for sure. Okay. 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 As you can see. And this is mm -hmm. a calabash. A calabash with the shea butter inside. Okay. <laughs> There's yeah. the war horn. <laughs> okay. In the past when they break in, they need men for war. For? Okay. Yeah. And this is fun tum fun and fun and fun and fun and fun. They are two. Can I put two for now? Yeah. They are two crocodiles with one stomach. But in the cause of evil, they fight over the food with their head and their tail. Meanwhile, what the food is going to one stomach. Mm -hmm. But because of the taste of the food, they fight. They all benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's a symbol of unity and diversity. Let's Meet Jessica. She joined us on this tour. Uh, at the Purple the Second Jubilee Museum. And who is Grandpa? Okay, so before I start, let's go to the side. Okay. Okay. And then I said, the king here is Otun Fosse or Say Adjuman Pempre the second. Through him, we have this cultural center because he gave this big land to the Tashramate for this establishment. This king was 39 years when he became king. Okay. Also, sat on the throne for 39 years. Mm. Through him, Ashanti became a kingdom on 31st of January 1935. So, due to that good work, he was being knighted by King George the Sus. So, all the kings, he's the only person having said attached to his name. Okay. And that's why he's called Otun for Say or Say Adman mm -hmm. Grandpa the Second. Mm -hmm. Most of the items inside the museum belongs to, to him. him. When he had the set, they gave him the car over there. That's the road show. Okay. The same year, 1935. So let's go inside and have a look. Okay. So this is the first official car used by Otun for Say or Say Adman Grandpa the Second. The car be then in the night of the British Empire. When was being knighted by the British Empire, they gave him this car. In the 80s, Ashanti territory. Okay. And it was right hand drive. You can go closer and. Uh, it 
was right hand drive when the British were here and changed to the left on 4th August 1974. As you can see, it's a rubbish. So there are two, we have the cocoa, as you can see the cocoa. This is not ripe yet. We have the cocoa, so, and that's the god for calabash. Yeah, it's not edible. The calabash is not edible. You can it You take the fruit from it, you dry it, become dark brown in color. That's what we used to drink water, palm wine, pito, and even porridge. So, we finally entered the museum. So this is planned for the second Jubilee Museum. The building here is a shanty traditional architecture. When you go to the King's Palace, this is how the buildings have been built. It's just that over here the chambers are small as you can see. But yeah. over there the chambers are very big. So the buildings as a small palace. So we have four chambers and each chamber has some artifacts there. Mm -hmm. And when we look over here, this is a traditional kitchen for the king. In Ashanti King, the women don't cook for the king. It's only men who cook for the king in the Ashanti King. It's a tradition in Asante okay. when you go to a palace. Every chief or king, it's only men that are allowed to cook for them. Why? There is a reason. The reasons are one, women menstruate. Menstruation is a taboo for the chiefs and the, the reason king. reason is also because of the jealousies among women. You know Asante culture, polygamy is allowed. Yes. So the king can have more than a wife out of jealousy one of them can put a charm in the king's food yeah. just to charm the king so mm. the name for those men who could we call them so those so the so try yeah, yeah. Mm. i mean the the chair over there the is so do here who will sit down make sure those that they cook does it perfectly mm -hmm. when they feel he takes the food for 30 minutes if nothing happens to him the king is served the food he does any present Okay. Never allowed. Mm. No allowed. It's very easy. If you want to touch it, but do you not you giving a chance? <laughs> no. Oh, are you scared? <laughs> yes. I'm scared. You know these museum pieces. The more reason why um, when during the COVID era we have to sanitize our hand. You don't know the particles or gems your hand picks yeah. would cause the decay of the museum pieces, which yeah. is very precious to us so we don't want okay so even this came to you can't see it on it yeah and you know let me anything meant for a king it will be disrespectful for any person to female. touch or hand it. The more reason. So, uh, shoes for the king, no one wears it. Stool for the king, no one sits on it. The chair for the king, no one sits on it. Because the king is very high in command in the land. No one disrespects the king. And again, we use charms and amulets to protect the king against evil spirits so even the stools that he sits on these some of these amulets are um and let me give an example and stood on them mm -hmm. as you can see this one so amulets under it this one they used to wear in public amulet and the local name is called shadow watching the cloud so we have enemies around him so it's for protection so is this the chair that the king sat yeah this and here is a traditional washroom for the king it's against our tradition for the king bare feet to touch the ground. So when he's walking, he sits on the stool, put the feet on the ivory, that's elephant tax. So this to show his authority. That's the, there's the sponge, there's the towel, you got okay. and there's the shea butter lotion for the skin. And these are calabash. So this is what the king uses to in the past, the, but not now. Uh -huh. And we have the back of the put the water inside his uh -huh. brass. Uh -huh. yeah, but the king doesn't put the bare feet. Underground. But now we have the jacuzzi. But you need to make sure that the feet doesn't touch the ground. When it touches the ground, it's not okay. Yeah. Like At that. this fourth chamber, we have the wardrobe. We have palanquin for the king. Palanquin for the king mother. This is it. Palanquin. This is palanquin. The local name is Apakain. Apakain. And this is also palanquin for the queen mother. And the local name is called Silk. Silk. Yeah. We have, we have Kete. The Tumpai from Tumpai. This is a chill. They use it for war. Okay. In the past, when they are going to war and they find the world very tough for their sort of amulet, they will hide in the bush and they play the club. 
They'll play by scratching the surface. When they scratch the surface, it sounds like a run of a leopard. So when the animals hear the sound, you can play it anyhow. It sounds like the run of a leopard. This tree is a wisdom tree, wisdom in grey hair. When they're entering the palace in the Shanta Kingdom, this tree is in front of the palace to tell everybody going inside to speak wisely over there. Okay. Because those inside the palace are very wise and very knowledgeable. Yeah. We are assuming the king is having a grey hair. Either physical, if the king is not having grey hair, spiritual, we are assuming he's having grey hair. So going to the palace with those people where we are here, so any play that you see this tree being there, it's in that place it's very special. Either in the palace or in the place. House. So as I said it earlier, so this place is a what? A palace, a small yeah. palace. That's why we have this tree here. And again, it is believed to also repel evil spirits away from where the tree is found. So to repel evil away from the palace. The more reason why you find it there. Usually you see it in front of the palace before you enter, but in this case inside uh, the middle of the museum. Mm. The A staffs here stand for the eighth clan of the Akans. Akans are the largest ethnic group, and the animals here are the symbol or totem for the Akan people. And all the Akans inherit from the mother's side. That's a matilinear inheritance. That's a sense of form, sense of form, so my four and the four chunks we can be for one of them. We are all Akans inherit from the mother's side. Okay. This is the vulture family as a tribusian. The crow, Ashima Ebusen, that's my mom's clan. So, that's so where how I do you know, know, like? But in even I can't marry a man from here because all trace from one ancestor. And there's the bat, Asen Ebusen, the leopard, great to Ebusen, the that's eagle, or your crow Ebusen. That's Ashanti's <laughs> royal clan. That's no. where the kings and the royals here comes from. This is Echo Agona, the parrot Agona Ebusen, the buffalo. So our next stop was at the visual art department where we have a batik clothing center, a kente weaving center, and a pottery and ceramic center. As you can see here, we have the batik and tie-dye section. This material we call it mesurized cotton. And before they will bring it to this table, they need to do the design in pens as you can see. So now they are now having the pencil and they are putting some lines in the mesurized cotton. It's mesurized because it's able to absorb the wax. That's what we call it mesurized cotton. So they are designing it. The byproduct of petroleum they use to make the wax. So before they will melt the wax, they need to put it on fire. As mm. you can see, I'm holding the mantle. So they'll put it on fire for it to be lovely. And these are some of the tools that they use. We have the broom. We have wooden stamp of various sizes and shape. And they will use the wooden stamp when they dip it inside of it and they stamp it. get the design in blue. So they are blocking the side to get the design in blue. And if they apply the broom to they'll get the broom design in blue. This is an example of a batik cloth. So why we have the white, yeah. It means that's the first designer. Yeah, this one is blue. <laughs> this one they used to tap it. <laughs> this is the tie-dye. As you can see, they tie the side. So they tie the side with the raffia or the shoe shine thread. So where it's being tied, it means they don't want any color to go there. As I said it earlier, as we are entering, here they do modern content. It's a traditional one that they modernize it. So the traditional as you all know, they make it for person here. They join it together to have a food. But that's why they make it bigger. You can use for curtains, so this is a counter for it. So we can enter here and have a food. Hey, can enter. This is the modern painting. As you can see, it's bigger than the traditional one. So the design is 
for being our ring here and it's hiding to the center. This is a shuttle, that's so why they put the curtain inside. And if they want to go, they have a weaving order. This is what they used to arrange the design here. The same order they will look at it to use the painters. So as you can see, the weaving seats here in this time. So they will step through on the third treadle. And they will make some things here. And let's just go through here to the other side. So this is a traditional kente. So as they weave, they weave this and they use their hands to the designs. So that's the weaving of it. This side And that's the big design that they have to do. That's the traditional aspect of it. And the whole of Ghana is only this place can find this type of weaving. So the difference between the traditional and the modern kente is the size of the cloth. So he showed us how tapestry is made and tapestry is basically a webbed face weaving. From this, we need to go to this session. On the graph. No, okay. Get it like this. We break out the shades of the person. Then we transfer the whole thing onto the graph sheet. So I'm just using the graph sheet to transfer it to the loom. So I'm just picking the color of the suit, shirt, tie, and the color of the face. So I'm just picking by the colors of the yarn and the So after the whole thing, now I'm writing the name of the person. Just write it. After the writing, I start to put one. So this will guide me. I'll put it in front of me here. And it will guide me. Counting by the dent. Counting by the dent of the graph sheet. Then you can flip forward. Because the dent of the loom represented one dent of the graph sheet. So if it is ten sheet, ten dent of the graph sheet. Then we pick 10 days. So how long does it take to come out? Well, sometimes it depends on the photograph. Okay. Some can take about two weeks. Some will take about one month. Some will take about one week. It depends. Normally, it comes to the size. Okay. So, yeah. I think the price. The price? The price? Yeah. And just go take the price for yourself. He said I'm a black man. <laughs> a lady like this was trying to this two thousand. He's a high tech. Yeah. I can't just give if you have mine, I don't take it. So that's an example of the finished work, tapestry. The finished one. So not only for men, ladies also. If you want your photograph, just do it. I'll do it for you. Doctor will do it for free. you. Free. Hey, free now. Free. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, let's move on to the next place. Here's the culture and ceramic session. They use clay to make flower pots, flower vase, pepper bowl, suba and grinding bowl. And then the clay, they get the clay from Pankrono or in fancy. Oh, okay. So that's the clay that they use to pull into color. But if they want to use the clay for anything else, they have a pit over there, they'll put the clay in the pit. In the pit. And they have a tube, they'll connect it to the top here to where the pit is. And they'll mix it, that's the washing of clay. Okay. And they'll save it to remove stones and other particles from it. And they'll put it here at this pit, at this side. Okay. And they'll cover it for two days. The clay will distill down, the water will come on top. And they'll take the lid from it by taking the water from oh. top. And they'll open up for the sun to shine on it. They'll call it drying Dry. before they'll bring it so inside. So it goes three stages before. Yeah. Okay. So let's go inside. Okay. That one is the clay that they'll bake the water here. They'll use their hands to do all the objects that you see around. So the portal will be sitting here. And someone will be turning this, we call the person the turner, and the whole thing is the portal view. So let me do it for you to have a look. So it will be 
minute slowly and they will use their hands oh, this clay okay. is very very elastic so as they will be doing it goes through okay so when they finish doing it they allow it to dry that is a bone dry or green way when it's well dry they will bake it in the kill with a temperature of 950 degrees Celsius oh, and it became baked sweat and it will be like this color yeah we don't do great in the paint like yeah, we don't do great we paint, paint and they'll paint it nice. Yeah. So that's what we do over here. Okay. So this is the traditional rhythm. We are now entering. Bear so, this is the traditional rhythm. They make it in strips. They join it together to have a full piece. This type of painting originated from Bowery in Ashanti region. This one is straight at the journey to yeah, the end. Yeah, my issue. Uh -huh. My memory will check my issue. The name of this cloth is Sikaye Bema. <laughs> oh, Asante Boni Rikinti. Nana Hima. <laughs> so they gave me the opportunity to weave the kente. Yeah, I tried, I tried. I'm not good at it though, but at least I did well. They told me well. So this brings us to the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next video.